Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Runcam Racer 5. Kind of had that upside down, didn't I? The camera lens doesn't have any markings on it. Thankfully the box has the 1.8 millimeters printed right on it, which means it has a field of view of 160 degrees. Also you have the input power from 5 to 36 volts. Comes with a wiring harness. Those two wires are to use on your flight controller. Mounting screws, support guard, and of course a lens cap. Of course it's a 19 millimeter mounting pattern. From the back to the lens is almost 21 millimeters. If we include the connector we get about 22 and a half millimeters. If we plug in the connector we get just about 23 and a half millimeters. It weighs just about 6 grams. One of the features of the camera is that it does have a gyro in it. And you see that number down in the bottom left hand corner. That is our angle. Now, I have noticed when I apply this, there seems to be a delay between that number that, that we see on screen and what we think is the actual angle of the camera. So that's something to consider, and I'm not sure how useful it is, but you tell me. Uh, this is a racing camera, so we're starting out with the uh, more aggressive kind of my racing abilities, at least in my backyard. I am flying a micro. It's two and a half incher, so not true racing as far as multi-GP standards go. Uh, but I give it to gas. Funny enough, I haven't flown this particular rig in this sort of style in maybe more than a year. This is kind of my tamer, camera testing rig. It's got a DVR built on board. It's the uh, Runcam FPV recorder that's, you know, that single 20 by 20 stack. And this is one pack. I went out and flew it one pack this style, and this is what I came up with. Kind of felt like it was old hat. I've used the Racer series and other builds that I've done on the channel, and typically people don't care for the camera. But I think it's one of those things that when you're in the goggles, the Racer camera is, it's just got a different sort of feel in the goggles. I know it's a crazy thing to say, but you feel like you can pick out more objects unless it's super low latency. I think it gives you the sense that you're more connected to the controls of the quad. Again, I hadn't flown this thing aggressively in well over a year. It may have been two years. And I picked it up for one flight, and I was able to pick it up pretty quickly. Yeah, I'm a bit sloppy in some turns, and maybe my punch-outs aren't quite at the right angle of attack. And the flight might not be just, you know, pristine. Uh, but I was pretty surprised at how I was able to control it in this space when I intentionally set the camera at a fairly high angle. I think I typically fly around 40 degrees. So if it's true and it's at 44 degrees or 46 degrees sitting flat on the ground, then eh, it's pretty good for me. I think it's one of those that if you're sharing your DVR footage with others, it's, it's something that you wouldn't want. But I think if you're racing or if you're out in a, an area where you might have a lot of scraggle or you're flying around a lot of obstacles, you might prefer this camera, especially if you have a, a different source for your HD recording, say on a 5 inch. Back to our more traditional camera stuff, doing the light test with the cloth directly on the lens and then about a foot and a half away from the lens. And then I extend my arm about as far out as I can, which is about three feet while maintaining a quad in front of myself. And, and you can see there I've got sleeves on. It is a bit chilly. Not terrible, I think, on this particular day. This was a few days ago. It has gotten pretty dang chilly since then. And you can see that angle updating. Uh, down in the right hand corner. Of course, this has got also the ability to turn this stuff off if you don't want to have the camera DVR stuff on there. Down the bottom right is your runtime. That's how long it's been powered on. And then you've got where you would typically put your pilot name, but it says run cam there. Take off, go for a little flight. This is part of the flight footage that I do, intentionally do slower so that you can grade out how the camera looks into shadows, looks from shadows out to the bright sun. You know how well you can see all the different things this time of year we have a lot of leaveless branches so what we would commonly refer to as scraggle we see our quad shadow which is one of my favorites uh, the sharpness on these and the bright the sharpness on these i think are tend to be a little bit brighter but we'll take a look at all the factory settings when we get back to the desk i do run through those things i do also do a little bit of nighttime testing even though it's not a low lux camera that's not what it's geared towards uh, but it's something that I do just about on all cameras. So even if it's not low lux, go, I go ahead and test that just in case. Maybe we find something isn't rated low lux, but all of a sudden it performs really well in low light. That's a bonus for us. And if you're just curious about how low light works on a particular camera, you can always find that out as well. If a firmware were to come out via the SpeedyB app, you would need to use that app and it wired to your flight controller in order to update that. Uh, Spartan FPV, a special little section coming up for you where I fly under the truck. Uh, you'd been asking me to do that for a while and I finally took you up on it and did it. Thankfully, got right under there. Didn't have to go out and try this run again. It was pretty, well, it was actually easier than I thought. 
Maybe it's just because, I don't know, i would not done it before and I kind of thought it would be more risky. Maybe I thought there was less space than I previously thought. So I got through pretty easy. Upcoming, you'll see I'll take a look at the garage doors to get that perspective on um, whether it has any sort of lens distortion the things that you might be looking at. A few other things about the camera. Uh, you do have the ability to flip the camera. So if you have that real high angle and you want the camera angle or the camera connector down at the bottom so you can get it below your flight stack if you've got a tight build. I know I've done that on some builds. That ability to turn over the camera can be really handy in allowing you to get the camera angle you want so you kind of clear that uh, connector out of the way from your flight stack when you do, like I said, have a really tight control. Uh, it does not come with a control board, so you have to uh, have one of yourself or purchase one separately. Uh, I do note that on their site, they have the weight at 6.1 grams. Of course, I got just about 6 grams flat. I think it was 5.99 on my scale, so real close there. And they rate the Lux at 0 0.01. So as I said previously, not a low Lux camera, but we go ahead and give it a try just because that's what we do. Uh, for your information, it's touted as a 1,000 TV line camera, and the price of this comes in at $35. Well, $35.99. And it doesn't matter which one you go for. If you go for the 1.8 millimeter lens or the 2.1 millimeter lens, they're both the same. Uh, they do note on their website, as many sites do these days, that delivery can be uh, delayed because of everything that we have going on, especially now with vaccines being shipped uh, we, we could see additional delays in our parts because those other things have a priority. So in this section, you can see I'm trying to hold the camera relatively flat, and it does show a relatively low angle there. So we get somewhere in the single digits as I pointed around. I've also got a control stick uh, set up to the camera, and you see there that I hit the, I think it's the left. When you press and hold to the left, it wants you to calibrate. So now my calibration is all messed up, and I'm trying to get it to recalibrate. I believe you point it put the camera flat on its back to get it to recalibrate or point it straight at the sky, at least the lens, not necessarily the quad, to get it to recalibrate. Uh, unfortunately, I kind of missed my gap there when it flashed on screen, so now our, our angle is way off. But as you can see, per other cameras, it doesn't do as well in low light as we would expect, so we didn't find an outlier here. Uh, you can also see some of our Christmas lights and that halo effect we get around those as well. This is the section where we're going to see the settings of the camera as we go through those real quick. If you needed to see those a little bit closer, then just pause. There's really not much there. You know, typical stuff, hue, saturation, brightness, contrast, and then you have the uh, the ability to flip the camera. Uh, this is our OSD control, as I mentioned in the earlier flight. Uh, we have sharp view. We can turn that on and off. We do have widescreen. And then, of course, you can select NTSC or PAL, and you can turn the uh, pitch, which is that angle, on or off. You can, pitch your, you can turn your timer on and off. You can turn the pilot name on and off. And then I also kind of move it around a little bit so you see how that controls. Uh, to get into these controls, I believe it's a hard right or you hold the control board to the right i'm using like a single stick uh a joystick on mine there's also control boards that have all five buttons in my case mine's just got a single button that's why i keep hitting it to the hard left because i'm holding that thing upside down <laughs> uh, it's only got two scene selections personal and light tracks so how many racers do we got out there and how many people who do race do you use this line or this series of cameras? I'm very curious to know. I do know that we have a number of people who visit the channel who do go and compete in their regional races, their local races, uh, whether they're multi-GP or not. And do you tend to find yourself using these cameras? And if you would, please, you know, leave your comment down below on why you choose this camera. That way, anybody who might be doing their homework doesn't have to listen to me and what I experienced. They can get it from another person as well. Maybe you have a similar experience. Maybe it's different. Either way, it should be additional information for those doing their research. Again, the camera comes in at $35.99 on the pricing. Of course, you could probably find that at other sources. I will link down below anywhere where I can find it. I think it just launched recently, so we should be able to find it at a number of our FPV shops, uh, if not now, shortly. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in that section down below. I appreciate your time, and thanks for watching.